Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Listen again for the word of God. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. All of us have special ones who have loved us into being. Would you just take along with me 20 seconds to think of the people who have helped you become who you are, those who have cared about you and wanted what was best for you in life? 20 seconds. Everybody longs to be loved and longs to know that he or she is lovable. Consequently, the greatest thing that we can do is to help somebody know that they're loved and capable of loving. Those are the words of Mr. Rogers. And our opening exercise came from his acceptance speech for the Emmy Lifetime Achievement Award he received in 1997. Fred Rogers made it his life's work to help others feel valued and loved just as they were. He tapped into perhaps the deepest human need and yearning, one we never outgrow. He knew just how often the message needs repeating before it stands any chance of sinking in for most of us. And he knew the tremendous power love has to shape us into the people God created us to be. In A Wind in the Door by Madeline Langle, the heroine Meg Murray receives a challenge from the cherubim Proganoskes, or Progo for short, to be a namer in the struggle between good and evil. A namer has to know who people are and who they are meant to be. The evil forces, known as the Ekthroi, wield the opposite weapon of unnaming, which makes people not know who they are. When people don't know who they are, Progo explains, they are open to being exed or annihilated by hate. If someone knows who he is, really knows, Progo continues, then he doesn't need to hate. Meg asks the cherubim how someone is named. Love, Progo responds. That's what makes persons know who they are. Love. Fred Rogers, 
and Madeline Langle preach the same truth. Love is what forms us into the people we are meant to be. Love names us and claims us. Love accepts us for who we are so that we can grow from there. Love is the bedrock of our beings. In his baptism, Jesus gets named. As he rises from the waters of the Jordan and the dove descends upon him, God speaks aloud Jesus' identity, beloved son. Jesus stands dripping at the start of his earthly ministry. He hasn't done anything yet. No one in the crowd clamors for his touch or his attention. No one but John has any idea who he is. In a sense, Jesus is a blank slate. And onto that slate, God emblazons that one word, beloved. That is what the crowd most needs to know. Perhaps even what Jesus himself most needs to know in order for all the rest to unfold. Love incarnate is himself loved unconditionally. God is pleased with Jesus just for being him, before and apart from anything he will do. We begin in the same place. When we are joined with Christ in the waters of baptism, we are publicly named beloved children of God. We arise dripping at the start of our life in Christ. We are blank slates with that one word emblazoned upon us, beloved. That is the bedrock of our identity, the place from which we grow. God's love sealed into us by the Holy Spirit. As Presbyterians, we understand baptism to be a sign of God's covenant. And we believe God's covenant love extends to both believers and their children. That is why we baptize both adults and children. And infant baptism is our ultimate theological declaration that God loves us just as we are. God's abundant grace covers us long before we can possibly do anything to deserve it. God's love claims us long before we can claim God in return. Only when we truly know who we are can we begin to lead the kind of lives to which Christ calls us. To return to Progo's words in A Wind in the Door, if we really know ourselves named Beloved, then we don't need to hate. And to quote again from Mr. Rogers, Jesus would want us to feel as good as possible about God's creation within us. And in here, we would look through those eyes and see what's wonderful about our neighbor. When we don't need to hate because we're secure in our belovedness, then we're primed for those great tasks of loving our enemies, forgiving those who have deeply wounded us, and striving for justice and righteousness in a world that so often fights for the opposite. 
when we can look through eyes tinted with the warmth of God's love within us and thereby see what is wonderful in those around us. Then we can be good neighbors, even to those radically different from us. We can welcome the stranger others say is threatening. And we can serve the lost and the least, no matter how unsavory they are by the world's standards. So in order to develop and grow in our identity as followers of Jesus Christ, we must grow and develop an ever deeper sense of ourselves as beloved of God. Sometimes I think this is truly the hardest part of our calling. We live in a dark and stormy world that continually tries to unname us, to make us not know who we are. Anxiety and depression eat away at our center. We live with those insidious little voices inside our heads that continually try to tell us that we're less than, messed up, unlovable. Even the church has often struck the drum of sinfulness so loudly that it drowns out any hope of hearing that deeper truth of how much God loves us. Again and again, then, we must remember the splash of our baptismal waters and hear the whisper of the Holy Spirit telling us who we are. The reformer Martin Luther said, there is on earth no greater comfort than baptism. When he was distressed, anxious, or plagued by doubt and despair, it is said he would defiantly shout, I am baptized, to remind himself of who he was and whose he was. When we remember our baptisms, We remember that we are beloved. We remember who we truly are, who we are created to be. I want to end as we began with the special ones who have loved us into being. But this time, I invite you to spend the next 20 seconds envisioning yourself with the very first one who loved you into being and the one who will continue to love you into being through the day you will die, God. So if you're comfortable doing so, I invite you to close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths, and with each breath, let everything else fall away. And just sit for this time with God. Now hear the heavenly voice saying, You are my child, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. Amen.